Hey guys, in this tutorial I am going to show you how to deploy your student application on Heroku for free. I assume that you have already developed an application with Streamlit. If not, check out my tutorial where we have turned an Excel file into the following web application. This application is currently running on my local machine. To deploy this Streamlit application we need the following. A requirements file, a setup shell file, a proc file, as well as git installed on our machine and a free Heroku account. There is actually a very well written article by Jill Bartana which explains each step of the development. I will leave the link to his blog post in the description box down below. With this being said, let us start with the requirements text file. This file is needed so that the server on Heroku knows what libraries it needs to download in order to run your code. To create the requirements file, we will take advantage of the following Python library, which will auto generate the requirements for us. Open up your command prompt or terminal and type pip install pip requs. Once the library has been installed, navigate to the folder of your Streamlit application. In my case, I have stored the files on my desktop in a folder called Excel Web App. To create the requirements file, all you need to do is to type pip requs, space, and then a dot and a forward slash. After pressing enter, you should see the generated requirements file. There's one minor issue here. Optional dependencies which you might need for your projects are not included in this file. For instance, the pandas library relies on xlrd or openpyxl to read excel files, but we will take care of this later in this tutorial. For now, let us continue and create the setup and proc file. Those files are required to tell Heroku the needed commands for starting the application. First, just create a normal text file and name it setup.txt. As a next step, go to the blog post from Gilbert. Copy the following lines and paste it into your setup file. Once done, save the text file as a shell script by using the extension .sh. In a very similar fashion, we will create our proc file. Go ahead and create a new text file and call it procfile.txt. Copy the following line and paste it into your text file. Make sure that the name of your Python file is the same as in the proc file. In my case, I call my streamlit application app.py. The proc file itself has no file extension. So go ahead and remove the .txt. Now that we are having our proc file, setup and requirements file, we can go ahead and create a new git repository. Git is a type of version control system that makes it easier to track changes to files. For example, when you edit a file, git can determine exactly what and who changed it. Do not worry if you have never used git before. We only need a couple of git commands, which I will show you in a second. For now, navigate to the following website and download the installer for your operating system. I will of course leave all the links in the description box down below. Once downloaded, open up the installer and just click on install. In my case, I have git already installed. Next, we also need the Heroku command line interface, in short CLI. Go ahead and download the version for your operating system. Once downloaded, click on next and then install. Last but not least, you will also need a free Heroku account. Head over to the website and follow their sign up procedure. Once we've got that out of the way, you should be able to initialize a new git repository by typing git init. Make sure that you are still in the same folder as your Streamlit application. Before deploying our app to Heroku, we need to log in. For this, you have downloaded the Heroku command line interface. Just go ahead and type Heroku login. A new browser window should pop up and ask you to log in. Once you are logged in, you can close this window. As a next step, type Heroku create followed by your desired domain name. I will call my application survey results. In that case, the final URL will be as follows. If you try to name your application also survey results, you will get an error as this name is already taken by me. Just try out any other name. Now we can push our code to that instance of Heroku by using git. Go ahead and type git add followed by a dot. It tells git 
that you want to include updates for all files in the next commit. Next, type git commit -m for message and type any message you would like. In general, this is used to track your changes over time. In my case, I will just name it initial commit. Finally, we can push it to Heroku by typing git push Heroku master. After pressing enter, we will see I've got an error and I intentionally included those errors in this tutorial. Because let's be honest, in real life not everything goes like planned. And there's a good chance that you will also face difficulties in the deployment process for your project. So let us have a look at the error message. It says that the exact pandas version 1.2 cannot be found. In that case, I could also say pick any available pandas version which is lower than 1.2 by using the less than symbol. Heroku can then check if it can find any matching version of pandas. It does not need to be the exact version of 1.2. After we have fixed this, we will repeat the steps as seen before and I will also leave the git commands in the description box down below. First git add followed by a dot, then git commit dash m with your message, and finally git push heroku master. Now this might take some time, but once done you should see the following saying that your app has been deployed to Heroku. You can reach your web application by clicking the following link. Alright, so the deployment was successful, but we still have one issue. As mentioned in the beginning, when we have created the requirements file, we did not specify the optional dependencies. In our case, we are reading data from an Excel file. So pandas is looking for the XLRD library. I hope you do not mind that I left those errors in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you that those things could happen and to show you how to solve them. So in my case we also need to add the XLRD to the requirements file. A short remark, only versions before 2.0 of the XLRD library are supporting XLSX files. We could have also used another library called OpenPyXL but in this tutorial I will just stick to XLRD. And by now you should know the drill. So first git add followed by a dot, git commit with your message and then git push heroku master. Alright, once deployed we can navigate to our web application which is now live on the internet. Whenever you freshly deploy your app in Heroku it starts up on one server, also so called Dino. If you want to keep your application free, you could type heroku ps scale web is equal to 1. Alright, and if you want to update your web application in the future, for instance I'm going to change the header, all you need to do is to run the free git commands again. So git add, git commit with your message and then git push heroku master. Once deployed, I will also set the dinos to 1. If we go back to our web application, we can now see the change in our header. Before you go, I have one bonus tip for you. As you are using the free tier of Heroku, Heroku will set your application into a so called sleeping mode after 30 minutes of inactivity. This is not a problem at all, it just takes some time whenever you load your page again. To avoid that Heroku is falling into the sleeping mode, you could ping it every 30 minutes so that your application stays awake. Just enter your app name and click the button here. Alright guys, that's it for this tutorial. As always, if you have any questions or need further support, just let me know in the comment sections down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.